Shalom, shalom Israel, Israelite Prepper here. Just wanted to uh, shoot a quick video and talk about biblical marriage. More specifically, I wanted to just share a few thoughts on biblical marriage and biblical divorce. And the reason why I want to share a few thoughts about it is because I think there's a little bit of confusion on what constitutes a marriage biblically and what constitutes a divorce biblically. And you, it doesn't take you long. If you go to social media, it won't take you long to see that a lot of people have a lot of different opinions and have a lot of thoughts and think some things are just automatic. And this all makes sense momentarily. But let me just go ahead and say quickly for the record, a biblical marriage is constituted with three components. And those three components are agreement, witness, and consummation. Agreement, witness, consummation. That's the three components of a biblical marriage. The agreement is between you and the woman, or I know some people will jump into uh, comic sections and stuff that, you know, well, back in the day when we were in our own land in our own time, you know, the father gave away the daughter, which is true. And I have no problem with that. That that still applies today. Obviously, when you live in community and everybody is practicing the Hebrew Israelite way. So, yes, the father gives away the daughter. The father has an agreement with the potential husband whom he's going to give his daughter to. That's your agreement. Your witness is the community, the congregation, uh, the most high, whatever. You have your, your, your witness. And then you have the consummation, and we all know what that is. So you can seal the deal. Israel had the same thing in Exodus when the father told them all the terms of the agreement, told them everything, and they said, all that thou hast said we will do. And, of course, Moses take the hyssop and the blood and sprinkle it on the whole congregation and stuff like that. So then we, you know, right there, we just witnessed a marriage. Okay. So most high, the children of Israel, all that, the agreement and the consummation with the blood, with the sprinkling of the blood over the con a congregation. So that is biblical marriage. Everything else is just extra. Whether you want to, you know, go to a church, have a ceremony and all that, that's extra. Having a marriage license, which I don't recommend, but teach his own. You guys do what you want to do. All that is extra. Okay. I'm not going to get into the whole marriage license talk or whatever. I'm not, we're not going there. Okay. We're, we're not going there. And it's still a legit marriage in the most high's eyes because yeah, marriage license hadn't been around that long. So, you know, you think our first couple of presidents, you know, they had wives, but no marriage license. So do their marriage count? Okay. So we're going to move on from that. Biblical divorce. It still constitutes three components. It really does. And that's witness, a get or divorce, and the transgression, that which causes the divorce. Okay? Now, the get still has to be ex executed. Now, we're going to just go with the Messiah's point of view for right now. Okay? I know some people, they have a you know, a couple of different reasons, you know, finding some uncleanliness. Sometimes they'll go with the apocrypha and say, hey, you know what? If you have a rebellious woman, you know, put her in our house, give her a divorce and send her on her way and all that. I get it. I get it. Then the Messiah comes along and says, OK, except for fornication or we can say adultery, you know, sleeping with another man. You know, you can't give divorce. That's fine. So what we're going to do for argument's sake, OK, is we're going to say simply adultery for argument's sake okay so no one's gonna argue that if a woman sleeps with another man not her husband that that would constitute grounds for a divorce so those are the three components of a divorce okay let's just say adultery or the transgression of the marital covenant the transgression witness and the get or the divorce okay the witness, you either caught 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 her or she fessed up or someone else caught her. The Most High certainly saw her, caught her if, if it was actually true or whatever. Um, so you have that, okay? So you have the witness, you have your get, and you have the transgression. That which causes, the uh, uh, gives a reason for the get. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because there's a lot of stuff going on on social media and they're making things almost automatic. Right now, this is what I mean by trying to make things automatic. 
if a woman goes out, sleeps with another man. Now, let me say this clearly, because sometimes comment sections get out of hand. People digress. It turns into something else or whatever. So let me just simply say, for the record, if a woman goes out and sleeps with another man, not her husband, she is committing adultery and he is lawfully able to give her a get or divorce and get rid of her. No problem. No debate. That's it. Okay. That's it. Relax. All right. Because I get so many people that, yeah, brother, but uh, okay, relax. But what I'm saying is this. If a woman simply leaves the relationship, okay, and sleeps with another man, she did commit the transgression. There is a witness, but she still needs to be divorced. She still has to get the divorce. The man still has to give her the divorce. He still has to release her. If the release, the get is not automatic. That is the whole point of this particular video. It is not automatic. If you're the man, you still have to give her the divorce or else she's just your adulterous wife. And not a divorced woman. There's a difference between a, an adulterous wife and a divorced woman. The, it's in the title. A the divorced woman received a divorce. Okay? And I'm only saying this because I've, I've seen in social media and just people just... It's certain questions, certain things that people can't seem to answer. Because they're not putting together all the components. You got to put together all the components. OK, I would love to go deeper, but then it'll start a whole firestorm or whatever. So I'm just going to end it by simply saying you need three components in both cases. OK, in a biblical marriage, you need witness agreement consummation, biblical divorce. You need witness transgression of the covenant and a divorce. All three. That's biblical marriage. That's biblical divorce. You need all three. If something is missing, something is wrong. This is Life Prepper. What say you?